This is Mary Ellen Etienne, Founder and Executive Director of Reuse Alliance, and we're here today to talk about the opportunities within the Reuse Marketplace. First, I'd like to give you an overview of Reuse Alliance. We're a national nonprofit organization dedicated to increasing awareness about all aspects of the reuse industry. We also promote the triple bottom line benefits of reuse and envision a world that is truly engaged in the reuse movement. By doing so, we believe we're helping to create a cleaner environment, a greener economy, and a more equitable society. Our work is centered around building a community of individuals and organizations interested in reuse, and then we're looking to spark innovation, increase communication, and foster collaboration among community members. We're also working to raise public awareness of and access to local reuse opportunities, and we're looking to change perceptions and behaviors around reuse. Our services include conferences and networking, such as our International Reuse Conference and Expo called Reuse Connects. We also offer training and support through programs such as Master Reuser, which is our webinar-based training program. We work on research and advocacy, such as our Reuse Data Standard and our National Reuse Day on October 20th of every year. We provide consulting services to reuse organizations and government agencies and other entities looking to increase reuse in their communities. And we also help develop chapters around the country. Our chapter locations include Oregon, California, Arizona, Texas, New York, and Massachusetts. What are the drivers behind reuse? Uh, why is it coming to the point where we're increasingly looking at reuse as a solution. There are five main drivers that we'll talk about today. Uh, we'll briefly go through four and then we'll concentrate on one of them. The first and foremost being global climate change. It's real, it's here, it's creating dramatic impacts on how we know life. Um, biodiversity loss, peak water, desertification, droughts, ozone depletion, and so forth. There's also an issue with our fuel reserves. Obviously, we're depleting our resources, prices are soaring, and it's creating impacts on how we do business. Unemployment is obviously still a big issue. Um, one of the things that we believe reuse can really help around. Municipal solid waste, it's near all time highs and it seems to be growing increasingly with the dependence on disposability and convenience. So another thing that reuse is looking to help. The aspect that we're going to the driver we're going to be talking more about today is uh, GHG and the life cycle view. Um, why this is important is because in older EPA models, um, they really just looked at waste management as an end of pipe issue that only accounted for a very small percentage, uh, less than 13% of GHG emissions. However, they adopted a new systems or life cycle view, which now states the provision of goods and services and food accounts for 42% of GHG. Now, this shift has really helped make the case for reuse because if you look at the way we're using resources and um, and how we're managing them in the you know beginning of pipe and end of pipe, it's it has a huge impact. But the issue is EPA still needs to improve their WARM model, which stands for Waste Reduction Model, and how it can be expanded to include more reuse. And we hope to work with them on that. So what can we do about it? We really need to change behaviors. We're looking to assist individuals and businesses to move towards the SMM approach, according to the EPA, the Sustainable Materials Management. And we hope to do so by incorporating more reuse. Um, we also look to promote for um, design for reuse. So that's looking to manufacture goods in the long run, looking at how you'll disassemble, repair, and resell these items and designing for reuse instead of um, designing for the landfill, how um, many items are designed nowadays, designed obsolescence. We're also looking to modify EPR or extended producer responsibility. So it includes reuse really from the beginning, the early stages of planning 
and beyond rather than an afterthought. And one of the things we say often is that materials that can be reused are resources, they're not waste. So we have to make that shift in our mindset um, looking at how we look at our materials. So what's reuse all about? Well, the simple explanation is it extends the life of an item by using it more than once for the same or new function. And by taking useful products and exchanging them without reprocessing, i.e. recycling, um, reuse really does help save the embedded energy involved in manufacturing as well as natural and man-made resources uh, in the long term. It also offers quality products to those with limited means, whether it's an individual or organization, and it also generates jobs and taxes that contribute to the economy. Um, we like to say that you can't get to zero waste without reuse, and we encourage sustainability professionals to really get comfortable with reuse and understand that it needs to be embedded into all aspects of their sustainability sustainability plans and operations. And it's really not just a back-end waste management issue. You really have to think about it in terms of front-end and procurement. So we're not looking just to sell, donate, or trade goods at the end. You need to buy reuse as well. You need to buy remanufactured toner. You need to buy refurbished furniture. It has to be on both sides. It can't just be a end-of-pipe issue. So what does the reuse marketplace look like? Um, we, we kind of brought them into a few what we call subsectors, and the first and foremost being conventional reuse. And this is probably what most people think about when they talk about reuse, um, although it's so much more, but <laughs> this is a start. Um, so you have thrift shops and consignment stores, building material reuse centers and furniture banks, resale and swap websites that I'm sure we're all familiar with, those brands. Um, there's also municipal reuse sheds. So the picture to the top left gives you an idea of um, what can be found in a municipal reuse shed. To the right, it's a food rescue, food pantry, food banks, those kind of organizations. The bottom left, um, we see flea markets, yard sales, those kind of informal reuse market places as well as swap events, which are gaining popularity around the country. There's even a movement um, called National Regifting Day on December 18th of each year, where people can um, share used, gently used, pre-loved, however you want to put it, gifts with each other before Christmas. Um, then there's the other subsector we talk about is creative reuse. Um, there's creative reuse centers all around the country. There's nearing 60 uh, currently, and um, these can be small organizations or very large organizations um, that take in industrial surplus and discards as well as residential materials and provide them um, and sell them either to the public or provide them to teachers and so forth. Uh, there's what we call trash artist or reclaimed material artist. This gives you an example of an art installation done with discarded toys. And upcycling is huge. There's designers uh, such as Bright Design Lab, which created the pre piece on the bottom right. Um, but really, it can run the gamut between clothing, jewelry, furniture, home decor, all the different things that could be made from reclaimed and salvaged materials. Uh, reclamation and salvage in terms of building materials. Um, this just gives you a quick idea of the planks that came from the loosened train trestle were then deconstructed and transformed and remilled into building materials. Adaptive reuse is kind of a combination between adapt, uh, creative and conventional. It's where you take um, a building or property um, or multiple properties and redesign them or rehab them for um, another use. Repair is a huge part of the reuse industry. Um, ifixit.com is a huge multi-million user platform that helps people repair their goods themselves. Um, there's also repair cafes around the country and around the globe that offer their ability to match 
repairing mentors with people so they can help fix their own goods, as well as obviously the repair professionals in, in your communities that are out there trying to maintain your products for as long as possible. There's also the refurbish and remanufacture industry in the subsector be, um, within that, and uh, car, automotive um, refurbishing and remanufacturing is huge. Toner cartridge, bottom right, you can see uh, office furniture to the left. Refillables. Now, this is something that has um, is kind of making its way back. It was the way we all did it <laughs> up until the 50s and then we went to the disposable um, culture. But um, it's starting to make a comeback. Growlers, milk, uh, refillable water um, dispensers in community centers and airports and, and so forth. Reusables, um, both uh, residential or com consumer products such as the diapers and the canteens and so forth, as well as uh, commercial grade reusables, packaging, shipping, logistics, as well as textiles that can be reused in industry as well. The rental and sharing economy is a huge part of the reuse industry. Um, car to go, zip car, city bike, uh, your local rental place, uh, tool banks ha popping up all around the country. These are all part of the, the sharing economy. So when we talked about earlier about reuse being about the triple bottom line, and we always promote the benefits thereof. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar, but if not, the kind of um, quick and easy saying is people plan a profit, and, and we're looking to kind of bring all those facets in to where they lie together is where true sustainability happens. sector. Reuse obviously is environmental friendly. It diverts res valuable resources from the landfill. It promotes resource conservation. Obviously it reduces the need for energy and raw materials and um, thereby reduces GHG. And of course it reduces plastic pollution by the elimination of single-use disposable materials. later. Um, so one of the things that I often say is that reuse is really the original green collar job. And this is a um, graph we did for Tree Hugger, and the data comes from the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. And when you take 10,000 tons of material, if you incinerate it, you create one job. If you landfill it, you create six. And if you recycle it, you create 36. And here's the kicker. Um, when you reuse it, you create anywhere from 28 to 296. And that really depends on the materials being reused. Um, further on the economic impact of reuse that I mentioned before, there was a recent study by Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and they studied the contributions of the state's reuse industry. And they found 46,000 people in the state were working directly with and for the reuse sector. Um, it also created 4.6 thousand jobs in supporting sectors and generated over 4 billion in sales annually that's gross sales. Um, the companies av are almost always locally owned and operated and really increases the capital retention for the state. So that's a fantastic study. If you go to the source document there, um, you can find out more. Um, I'd also like to just maybe take a few minutes and we'll do a case study about reuse opportunities within the retail sector. Now this is uh, very specific. We can do reuse opportunities in any sector, but we figured let's uh, start here and, and this is just uh, three different strategies that you, you can kind of get a sense of how reuse really can have an impact. So um, 
while it can help in all aspects of a retail operation, we'll focus on just three areas within that, branding, renovations, and packaging. Okay, so how can we use reuse to green a branding for a retail operation? So the, the problem will go problem solutions and, and so forth for each one. So here's, here's your issue. Your brand is currently associated with low quality, what I like to call delayed disposable bags. Those are those non-woven fabric material that really you use them 10, 15 times and they fall apart. You can't repair them, you can't wash them, um, and there's many issues related to that. Your, your retail customers are also not able to connect with reuse in all areas of your environment, your retail environment, as well as your com community members may not know the difference between reusable and disposable and or they don't think you do. Um, in terms of solutions, you want to make sure your brand is linked with quality. You want to associate your brand with high quality, durable reusables. You want to make it convenient so customers can access reusables at any point of use. And it's not just checkout, it's also produce bags, gift bags, whatever the case may be. They should be built, these reusable options should be built into the retail landscape. And you want to show leadership. You want to set up partnerships with local organizations, reuse groups, and so you can engage and teach your customers about the differences between reuse and disposables. Reusables can also help meet your goals, whether they're financial, um, you can make money if you choose to sell them, brand exposure, it can help you gain positive exposure when uh, you know customers are carrying your logo on these quality bags um, and, and, and so forth, and obviously waste reduction. You can help yourself and your customers reduce waste at, at the source. In terms of resources, this is just one of many um, organizations that you can contact. They just happen to be um, part of our network. Um, Bag the Habit um, is one organization that offers high quality durable reusable bags. They make them customize customizable and they offer different merchandising solutions as I mentioned if you need the produce bags or the gift bags or something like that throughout the, the retail environment. They also offer educational programming for retail customers. This just gives you an idea of some of the products they offer um, and some of the branding they do for other large-scale corporate clients. And this is an example of the education program that they offer where you design, kids can design their own reusable bag. And this also gives you an example of the placement of reusable produce bags in the retail environment so it's really throughout the thing it's not an afterthought it's it goes throughout the organization and you can even consider reusables at special events this was an example of uh, Tom's of Maine and they had an employee recognition dinner and so the premiums came in the reusable bags so that was um, the retail environment. Um, now reuse to green your renovations. So here's a slated problem. You have sustainability or lead goals on your project and you have to figure out how you can document it correctly. You started a renovation project and, and how do you find a home for all the stuff coming off the job site or transversely how do you obtain, obtain materials when you are having a renovation and looking to integrate reclaimed materials. To implement these solutions you want to seek out um, a materials exchange that can provide you with um, a matchmaking service. Um, I'll back up. A materials exchange, a virtual exchange, online exchange comes through many different names um, but it's basically a service that helps you buy, sell, or trade used or surplus materials. Some of them go beyond the online matchmaking and actually offer consulting services um, that help educate staff and coordinate those reuse activities and generally in both you'll have tax deduction opportunities when you donate materials. 
Uh, one of our other members is Reuse Marketplace. This gives you a, a great no-cost option that everybody should be aware of. It's a free online materials exchange network. It's open to all. It's free. You can buy, sell, trade, or give away any used or surplus items. Um, and currently covers several states and is expanding. A full service option, I mentioned that some offer consulting services and 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 coordination and one of these is Planet Reuse and they have a national online materials listing and they also help broker and do consulting so they can help if you're on a lead project do documentation the ingoing and outgoing materials you can source materials for the owners that are doing uh, a renovation and they do full coordination and documentation um, obviously, they can h help you find home for excess materials, carpet tile, ceiling tile. This is a list of uh, some of the different materials. Um, they can also help you access surplus or reclaim materials such as wood, flooring, lighting, fixtures, and other fixtures. Now, how to use reuse to green your logistics. So your, your problem in this situation is you work with vendors or perhaps manufacturers and they want to protect their branding they, they're looking to secure as much shelf space as possible in that retail environment we were talking about earlier um, when you send a branded display is often in single-use shipping boxes um, that leaves the retailers with recyclables that they need to handle and then you're you wind up passing on costs for packaging for reverse logistics, i.e. unsold or defective goods that are coming back to the manufacturer. Um, you want to, in, in order to solve this problem, you want to work with a company that offers you and the vendors um, reusable solutions. So your vendors will be able to save time and money. Obviously, they're lowering their shipping costs, their labor costs, if they're not handling all those recyclables, more productivity, the goods are flowing easier, it, and um, reusables offer better product protection and worker safety. Uh, another benefit is you won't have to manage their single-use recyclables or recycling contracts. So if you make sure all of your logistics and packaging are reusables, that's a whole element that you can take out of your workflow. Um, and you could also use reusables for return logistics and or donations to nonprofit organizations if you'd like. So if you have certain things coming out of a retail environment that you can't sell and they aren't going back to the manufacturer and you have uh, relationships with local reuse organizations, you can use those reusables to pass that on. Um, reusable packaging and containers that are designed for multiple trips and extended life can include pallets, handheld containers, uh, bulk containers, dunnage, which support the materials, um, and other transport packaging. Uh, another member within our network is usedcardboardboxes.com, and they provide uh, high quality used boxes for distribution of goods, and they provide retailers with used boxes for return logistics. So in, in every instance, you can see that um, reuse, there is a problem generally associated with managing single-use disposable goods. Uh, reuse can often be the solution to that, and there are many resources within the Reuse Alliance network that can help that. Um, this gives you just an example of their, their boxes that are good as new. They're, they're technically used, but they're still in, in fantastic and usable conditions. So uh, especially Gaylord boxes, which are very expensive to use just once, it, it's almost ludicrous. Um, so if you can get these um, Gaylord boxes and, and use them um, over and over again, it, it's just financially beneficial to do so. So that really um, gives you a, an idea of the reuse marketplace, what's out there, how we work with different entities. Um, in this talk, we talked about the retail sector, um, but obviously this can be extended into any aspect of the corporate environment, as well as in, in the personal um, and consumer world. So um, it has applications everywhere. So if you have any further questions, comments, you'd like to get in touch, here's my information. 
mariellen at reusealliance.org is my email. You could also find us online, reusealliance.org, and we have several um, social platform, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, etc. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from some of you.